The world may soon have a new nation, and almost nobody knows where it is, nor how divided it is over the issue. Despite its small size and obscurity, New Caledonia is a nation of two parts. Seven years after South Sudan declared independence in 2011, New Caledonia will vote on the same question on November 4th, 2018, asking the native Kanak and Kaldosh in this wording, do you want New Caledonia to accede to full sovereignty and become independent? Yes or no? A simple question, not for the string of Melanesian islands, a special Pacific collectivity slash country under French rule. With a land area of 18,576 kilometers squared and a population of 268,767, composed of the native Kanak people, French Kaldosh, and other Asian and European immigrants. New Caledonia is made up of the islands Grande Terre, the Loyalty Islands, the Belop Islands, Isles de Pains, and many other outlying atolls. Despite the French president acting as head of state, New Caledonia is jointly governed by an appointed commissioner, from France, and a locally elected president. One of the island's major issues, with separatists seeking more a partnership with France than current direct rule, while loyalists prefer the current situation of local autonomy, but international dependence on France. The Pacific nation's population is fiercely divided over the issue, with the native Kanak people, who make up 40% of the population, two-fifths, being in favor, the French-descended Kaldosh, who make up 29% of the population, one-third, being against, other minority parts of the population being either neutral or pro-French rule, even though only 173,000 of the island's population of 270,000 are eligible to vote in the referendum. So will New Caledonia begin the process towards independence, ending 164 years of French rule? The question and will-be results are complicated, due to New Caledonia's long controversial history, casting a long, violent shadow on the politics of its independence. New Caledonia's history begins in 3000 BC, but its isolation makes its early history obscure to us. It was likely settled by the Lapita people, an Austronesian people who settled Polynesia, Micronesia, and New Caledonia in Melanesia, hunter-gatherers and agriculturists who were isolated for most of their history. Until Europeans arrived in these regions, the only newcomers were a few Polynesian sailors between the 11th and 18th century, mixing with the Melanesian peoples to form the modern-day Kanak creating a clan-based society around the symbol of the Fleche Feteri, a totem placed upon the chief's hut, which has become the symbol of the Kanak people, featured prominently upon the Kanaki New Caledonia flag, which has flown alongside the French tricolor on the island. Europeans would first arrive in New Caledonia in the late 1700s. Isolation kept it both distant and independent, but Captain James Cook was the first European to arrive in 1774. The Englishman named the islands New Caledonia after the Latin word Caledonia for Scotland, after his father's native land and its rocky landscape. Cook and his expedition only spent 10 days on the island, still bringing disease to the natives which made them fearful of Europeans and hostile to newcomers afterwards. The French would not arrive until 1792, coming under Admiral Antoine Brudy d'Entrecasteaux in search of French shipwrecks. The Admiral's mission explored the north of the island, but found the natives hostile, spending only a month on the island as the region was more trouble than it was worth and exploring turned up little. Native hostility and isolation would keep the island independent for the next 50 years. In the following decades, only whalers, merchants, and missionaries came. English and American whalers would be the first to establish settlements on the islands. Merchants came seeking sandalwood to trade for tea in Asia, and missionaries came seeking to spread Catholicism and Protestantism, all three bringing tobacco, alcohol, and iron tools to the island, introducing them and the sport cricket to the native Kanak. It was not until 1853 that New Caledonia became strategically important as a trade post, a meeting point between Asia, Oceania, and America in the Pacific. Fearing British seizure, Emperor Napoleon III demanded the islands annexed as a penal colony to oppose British dominance in the region, with Rear Admiral Fevereur de Poins annexing the islands on behalf of France, raising the French flag over the main island on September 24, 1853. With the French capital of Numia being established on the same day, so began a new era for New Caledonia. An era of French colonialism, as the first convicts arrived in the colony in the May of 1864, 
between 22,000 to 25,000 would be shipped to the colony until the procedure ended in 1897, with criminals sentenced to more than eight years obligated to settle the land, becoming the first Kaldach or white settlers of the islands. Besides just convicts, three more waves of settlers would come between 1857 to 1884, nearly all being French relatives of landowners, merchants, or soldiers who settled alongside the prisoners. The rest of the Kaldach population being composed of French sugar farmers from other colonial regions, and Australians, and New Zealanders who would arrive in the late 1800s. Beside the native French-born Zorelli or continental French who briefly lived on the island until they returned to Europe. Since then, the islands have been divided between the urban Kaldosh and the rural Kanak. It was not until the 1860s persecution first began in response to violence against settlers, though. Governor Guillon would be the first to institute the confiscation of Kanak lands, justifying it by claiming it was a process to civilize the Kanak, who practiced cannibalism and polygamy, forcing the Kanak inland to expand European cattle farms and nickel mines, depriving the natives of territory and power on the island. The policy was only reinforced after the revolt of 1878, where the Kanak chief Atay and his allies revolted against France, embroiling the island in civil war for seven months. Chief Atay was defeated by the French army and native auxiliaries, but violence continued, even when Atay was executed and his skull taken to France. It would not be returned until 2014, 135 years after the revolt. Continued unrest justified the French colonial government to impose the Indigenat system, or Code de la Indigenat, which segregated the Kanak population to reservations, dividing them from the developing French society, relegating the clan-based Kanak to secondary citizens, only useful as forced labor after the importation of convicts ended in 1897, a period during which the Kanak population would enter a steep decline due to limited opportunity and social decline. Even then, the Indigenat would not be repealed until after several lesser revolts and World War II in 1946, after which the Kanak were given French citizenship and the right to vote in the next decade, though the divide would remain, as, beyond just rights, the island had two parallel societies. So it makes sense the New Caledonia of the 20th and 21st century is rather divided. New Caledonia's first Kanak Caldochi political party would form in 1953. The Union Caledonian came with Kanak political rights agitating for greater autonomy for New Caledonia in France. But this national unity would be brief, as a new consciousness emerged in the 70s. Fiji's independence in 1970 and Kanak intellectualism politically divided the island, creating a radical divide over the island's political future, with the Kanak majority Front Independiste forming in 1975, which demanded independence as violence flared in New Caledonia. Peace talks in France between 1976 and 1988 hoped to, to quell the violence, but only more radicalism emerged. The island's identity splintered. There was hope to reach common ground between the rural Kanak, who sought independence, and the urban Kaldach, who wished to remain under France. After a controversial election, the Front de Libération Nationale Kanak et Socialiste, or FLNKS, formed, demanding outright independence, a successor to the Kanak Independence Front. FLNKS declared an independent republic, but reneged after the elections of May 1986. An uneasy peace came as New Caledonia was given limited autonomy by France in 1984 due to the Le Moyne statue, until violence was more flared with the Ovu crisis in April of 1988, where 27 people were taken hostage by a Kanak separatist group aligned with FLNKS, holding 22 French gendarmes, policemen, and one magistrate captive in a cave for a week causing international attention, as the radicals publicly demanded independence. When negotiations failed, an eight-hour siege began, where French commandos fought off heavy machine gun fire from 30 Kanak rebels, during which two commandos died and 15 of the captors, bringing a bloody end to the crisis, which to this day remains controversial and a sore subject on the island, featured in detail in the French film Rebellion. Fearing even more violence, the Matignon Accord and Noumea Accord were signed in 1988 and 1998 respectively, putting New Caledonia on a 20-year schedule of development, with the possibility of independence, settling on a date of a referendum 20 years from then, as the referendum of 1987 was boycotted by 84% of the Kanak population, giving time to discuss the island's future and divides, with the new date being settled on later as November 4th, 2018. New Caledonia is a nation widely divided even to this day as that decision approaches. Generally, one will find the rural clan-based Kanak favoring independence, and the urban cash economy Kaldach favoring continued French rule, but there are always exceptions, as only longtime residents of the island and native Kanak will be allowed to vote in the referendum. 
with many more population segments favoring one or the other. It is still likely and predicted France will win out, though. New Caledonia is still a nation highly in flux. In 1988, its population of 145,000 was 43% Kanak and 36% Kaldosh. By the 2010s, the population had increased to 270,000, but now it is only 40% Kanak and 30% Kaldosh a shared decrease due to immigration out of the country. The current population itself fiercely divided between the 70% urban population and the 30% rural population, a developmental divide common in the Pacific region due to islands' small sizes and underdevelopment. What will the results be on November 4th, 2018? Independence or dependence? Only 173,000 of New Caledonia's 270,000 citizens will be allowed to vote, with Kanak political parties and churches arguing for independence. While the French government hopes for continued rule, it will not oppose the results, fearing violence or international intervention. But the wider Pacific community has remained neutral, only fearing destabilization in the region should a new nation emerge and ignite a power scramble. As of August, the vote seems to lean towards 20% for, 69% against, and 11 undecided, suggesting New Caledonia will remain part of France, as nearly all the major political parties are pro-French beside FLNKS and other Canuck-dominated ones. But things can always change, as, by the Accords, if this referendum fails, two more must be held in 2020 and 2023 giving the island a second and third chance at independence. So New Caledonia's future status is extremely subject to change. This year it looks unlikely, but someday, New Caledonia may become the world's newest nation, be it either Kanak or Caldoche, even if it is not next month.